Hey guys, I want to share a dream with you. Um, I had about a week ago about a famine in the land, and that's why I put out that one message. There's a famine in the land for the lack of the word. But I'm going to share the dream with you and some scriptures. Because it's time. Okay, the, the one I put out about famine in the land for the lack of the word. And the Lord gave me a specific scripture in the dream. There's actually more than one dream, so just bear with me. <clears throat> Amos 8.11 It's not going to be a famine for food. And thirst, hunger and thirst, but for lack of the word. But yet it is going to be a natural famine. The Lord told me that. This is not a scared straight message. Sorry, I got to grab something to drink a little bit. I just eat a little bit of popcorn. Because that's even in the Bible. The fearful and unbelieving aren't going to enter in. This is not to get you scared to come home, to come in. This is not to get you to try to con your way out of the calamities that are about to hit. The Bible says the government rests upon his shoulders. He says, come learn of me. My yoke is easy. My bird is light. I'll give you rest. And that's what Jesus is telling us, guys. That's what God's telling us. He's telling us to come to the wedding. It's fully prepared. The economy is not coming back, guys, like we think. For his people, yes. For the world, No. I'm just going to shoot straight with you guys because there's too much of this other stuff. I hear it all the time. Oh, if you're not saying something that's good and, you know, everybody wants to hear the blessed, the, the, the blessed land message, the blessed life message. We're going to get a new car and a new house and our 401k is going to explode. So we can all drink pina coladas on a beach somewhere and just enjoy the beauty of Jesus. Well, you know what? There is good news, guys. There's great news, and that was the cross. And then he sent his son for our lives, our messy, sinful, dirty, ugly lives, even while we we're yet sinners and still hating him. There's a lot of good news, guys. But you gotta listen. You gotta grasp it. You gotta let it enter into your heart. You gotta let him live in there. If he's living outside and you got him in a box and set off the side and just pull him down when you need him. <clears throat> Guys, those messages don't fly anymore and I'll tell you why. And if you don't like these pages in the Bible, just rip them out. <clears throat> what are you going to do <clears throat> with the five foolish and the five wise virgins? What are you going to do when people come and they're knocking at the door to enter in and he says, depart from me. For your work was of iniquity. Did we raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils in your name? Do all these wonderful, great things. I never knew you. Why is that stuff in there, guys? Why is the marriage supper of the Lamb? Look what happened when he called them. Read it. It's in the Bible. Matthew 22. Why put out the time to pray and weep between the porch and the altar? Read what happened to the people that he called it took it lightly. That was the dream that I had after I had this dream about the famine. And in that famine dream, which I never got into all of it, it was the splitting up of the government. Everybody, I'll say this, okay. There was governors and different mayors and just different people there were, it was like the land of Egypt. 
and they were acting like pharaohs and they had their own little kingdom. There's a lot more to it, and I'm not going to share all the details of it. If you want them, email me at Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com and I'll send it to you. But not everybody's going to maybe even accept it. So I'm putting out the parts that the Lord told me to put out, not because I want to keep anything secret. I don't. But it was fractionalized. Everybody wants to think Trump is going to win the day and he's going to be the hero and all this. You know, I, I can hear it now, anti-Trump. I'm going to vote guys too, like you do. And I'm probably going to vote for him again. But he does some things that I don't like too. But my vote is for Jesus. That's what I'm telling you guys. We've got to get back to the cross. Because none of this other stuff... Unfortunately, this was a lot more than a wake-up call, guys, but there's a storm coming. I had that out, and now on their preachers, big ones, knitting it, saying that he's got a series on storm. This was last year. I'm not trying to sensationalize it. I'm glad that other people are seeing the same thing and other preachers, and, and it's because it's just confirmation to me. But he gave me the dream, it gave me the specific dates, and it was 8-11 to 9-11. Well, now I got Amos 8-11. Almost a year later, eight months later, specific in the dream, in the scripture. And in this dream, guys, look at it, look it up. There's a storm coming to America. It's on, it's on the YouTube. It's been out for a while. It wouldn't let me put it out till last December, <clears throat> even though I had it last August. A year ago, August. But he's adding to these dreams, but part of one of the dreams that were added to it, I haven't got to the one yet that I just had, but this one was part of the dream about the storm and the flames were 100 foot high. Guys, America was on fire from coast to coast for a month. But in this dream, I saw people with wheelbarrows and they were coming to the fire and the, there were stacks of hundred dollar bills guys they still had the bank things wrapped around them you could tell that they just come from the bank and they would dump them on the fire because they had no value idols are coming down guys we've idolized the money everybody's like the economy the economy the economy the economy let's open back up for businesses let's open back up the church has kind of been secondary. Look where our real power was. Most people, most churches didn't even say, didn't say squat. They just did everything that was, was told to them to do. Some of them are still are. A lot of them don't even want to open up because of the convenience, because they don't have to jack with people and their problems and issues in life. They just want you, they just want their, they just want you to give, 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 give. That's why I don't, partly why I don't ask for an offering, but that just could be me, you know, okay, guys, it's, you got a checkbook, send me a million dollars. I, I, you know, I could use all of it, but I got no skin in the game from anybody right now. But I have got some checks, just out of the blue. Least and expected when I needed it. It's right there, the Lord provided. Didn't ask. I didn't even ask God, honestly. I was like, okay, God, you told me to do this, and there it is, and finances are getting, you know, we're not destitute, but they're like, man, they're kind of thinning out a little bit here, Jesus. But okay, and you want me to give more, but okay, just obedient. And I know others that are doing the same thing with seemingly nothing. Just doing it, and things are just, blowing up for them. And they're just out there in the field, 
Just doing what of the obedience. It's going to be a grassroots movement, guys. Not some big name church that can get the glory and sensationalism and their ministry. And I mean, think about it, guys. Three three months ago, five five months ago, would you have thought all this mess coming against the body of Christ? Why? Because honestly, guys, the vast majority of our religious experience was built upon sand. Sorry to tell you that. You can go denominational or non-denomination. There's goofiness all, ab all abound. <clears throat> all abroad. The vast majority of them was like a Hollywood sensational show whether it was their band the healing miracles big buildings bigger the better taller the steeple most of them had platforms everybody was up on a platform why a platform guys why do you need a platform why do you need to be above everybody you don't not in the bible anyhow Read Matthew 20. Just read it. Guys, it's time to weep. That's the beauty of the cross. It's for all. We have to listen, guys. This was the this was the other part of the dream and the and the, about the about the dream and the famine. That's how come I know what's coming. The news is full of it. The fear mongers, of course, they're gonna just you know, there's going to be a shortage, but there's going to be no shortage for God's people. There's going to be a lack, but there's going to be no lack for God's people. I can give you a hundred testimonies about it, and just since that happened since January, when my wife lost her job and three quarters of her income got wiped out, and I had didn't have a plan to replace it. God did, though. He's been faithful and true to it, too. But in this dream, after I had the one about the famine, after the one that the famine and the land for the lack of the word, look at it, there's parts in there of it. Then a couple, about a week later, I had another one. And in the dream, the Lord started speaking to me he said he said why are you taking it lightly about the famine that's going to hit this land why are my people taking it lightly don't take it lightly He's calling us to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The table's ready. The feast is ready. It's prepared. But he gets to pick the seat where we sit. He gets to pick the location. He's picking the menu. He's even picking your garment. And some people even read it. Somebody tried to get in with the, without a garment, without a wedding garment on, and they cast them out. They were cast out. Look, read the people that he called and they t took it lightly and had their houses, land, and cars. And, you know, everybody said, it's surreal. All the churches are going to open back up. All everything's going to go back to normal. All my 401k, all the economy, the economy, the economy. It's an idol, guys. All this stimulus stuff, all this, you know, whether it's, you can demonize one of the political parties and not the other. It's fake money, guys. Honestly, it's just printed up. And man, second grade math tells me there's something wrong with this. The common Joe is starting to really stand up. And there's police officers, and some of them are even getting in trouble for one for doing it in uniform. He was so adamant about it, but he was a veteran, very adamant about his stance, outspoken person. You know what? I'd rather have him show up when the bad guys show up too, you know? I don't want some, some wimp. But speaking out, all 
across this land. It's time for God's people to stand, guys, to rise. <clears throat> the world's in trouble, guys. <clears throat> people are dying. Literally. You think after three months of everybody being locked up or two months or whatever and all the different people and some of them are still are and all this still chaotic stuff and they're already barking about second wave and blah, blah, blah and all this mixed up garbage. Like I said in one of my, you know, yes, I get it. The virus is very real and it's very deadly. And it's sad, and I'm not mocking or discounting any of those people that have died. Some died horrible deaths from it, or any of the loved ones. And one was a firefighter, and he lost his child to it. And that's that's a hard road to hoe, guys. And to still put your trust in God. But when it doesn't come back, are we going to trust God? It's like Job did, had to. All the different men and women of God. Meshach, Shabbat, and Abednego, those aren't just cool, those just aren't cool stories, guys. Gideon. This is the rubber meets the road, guys, okay? 9-11 was kind of a wake-up call, but we didn't pay any attention to it. A month or two, and everybody was God, country, and, you know, mad at terrorists and da 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 and blah 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 and <clears throat> this is a prelude to the storms that are coming guys but sometimes storms don't come to destroy they come to clear a path God is leveling the playing field there's a flood coming guys there's a Joel's army coming forth there's a it's not going to be a revival, guys. You can take the revival out of it. You can take the movement out of it because movement connotates people and their places and their buildings and their ministries and their things. Revival, everybody will run to Florida or Canada or wherever the latest and greatest is. He wants you to get it. And that 5 a.m. prayer is so important. That's what he keeps reiterating to me. Because it starts the day. And not everybody's going to get to. And there's going to be different times you can. And I sleep in sometimes because I have to. Cause it feels like I've been burning the candle at both ends. And I'm just physically exhausted. But I'm up sometimes at 2 and 3 in the morning too. <clears throat> praying before the 5 a.m. prayer. One day I was like, it was like, man, Lauren, you told me 5. And here it's 4. So I want you to prepare for the battle of the prayer at 5. Okay, God. It's just time to be obedient, guys. What's he telling you to do? We all can be there, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at 5 in the morning. Poke my head out my door. My address is different than your 3108 and my street address. But God sees us gathering together as his people. It just, it just, God, this is a little... Cruel, maybe crude, crude, even I don't know. It just hadn't hit the fan yet, guys. Months of people not being able to pay their rent, stores closing, big names now and little names. Uh, look what some of these big boxes did to people. They didn't care. Big churches, where were they? These big names didn't hear from Pete from most of them. Here a little bit here and there and a couple of them. A few, yes, stepped up to the plate. The vast majority, no. Still didn't, still haven't. It's not time to take this lightly anymore, guys. What's the Spirit saying in the church? He wants us back. God, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and His Word, those need to be our source. Our main source and you're gonna get it on your knees and we're gonna get it weeping as a nation and as a world because things aren't coming back like they were guys it's not gonna happen I'm sorry to burst your bubble 
I'm not doing it out of fear, and I'm not doing it out of there's 9 million coronavirus prophets now on the internet. <clears throat> Everybody's had dreams and visions, and they saw it coming, and blah, 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 and da, 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 and, you know, it's, that's just as surreal as the rest of it. It can be for all. Guys, I'm going to end with this, okay? Vessels. Because he said some vessels are for honor, created for honor, and some for dishonor. Of course, there's going to be all this crazy, goofy people. You know, I can name them, not going to do the sensationalism of it. You know who I'm talking about, some of them. Downright evil people acting. Who's their dad? Where's their source coming from? Man, even just the abortion issue, guys, and just we're a nation with blood on our hands. Innocent blood. If it was such a good thing, why didn't CNN go into one of these places and do a do an expose on it and camera crew in action? Man, that'd be pretty grotesque. You know it would. What I'm saying about the vessels, though, that are for honor that he created. And so we can't take it lightly, guys. The things that he's showing you and teaching you and wanting to teach you and show you. I don't care where your journey's at. Mine was started 40 years ago, but it wasn't always walking with the Lord. I had a prodigal son experience, and they're mad at as, as 10 Indians spit nails at God. We're in a dangerous place, guys. Even after knowing the truth, how could you walk away? I really get the grace piece, guys. I really do. That's in my one of my YouTube videos about my testimony is real grace. It's an older one, but it's there. Out there. Pretty much trying to be an open book here, guys. But the vessels that were created for his honor. I was sitting there <clears throat> and the Lord said, what do you do when you go to the store, the grocery store? I was in prayer it was a month or two ago. Oh well, Lord, I get up, take my keys, walk out to my car, turn on the ignition, drive to the end of the street. I know where the store is, it's to the left. I'll take a right at the next stoplight. You know, it's pretty close. There I am at the store. He said, my legs and my feet walked me to the car, but they didn't turn on the ignition. My hands turned on the ignition. My mind at the end of the street told me which way to go. My eyes showed me the way. That's the body, guys. And then he took me to these other vessels, the vessels that he created. We can't, we are all part of the body and there is but one head and his name is Jesus. <clears throat> None are greater than the other. I needed my legs to walk to the car. My, I could, my feet couldn't turn on the ignition. I needed my hands to turn on the ignition to get my keys out of my pocket. I needed my brain to tell me to go to the left or to the right and my eyes to see the road to get me there. I needed every part of that body to to accomplish just going to the grocery store. So here's the vessel piece too. Gas can, milk jug, and I got a storage tote that my wife puts the kids pool, the kids, grandkids pool in. So we keep it, you know, so we don't have to buy another one. They're only 25 bucks, but you know, we've had them ruined before for leaving them out and the mold and mildew gets on them or whatever. So now we dry it out real good and store it real good and a tote well I'm not going to the tote that's in my garage I'm not going to pour milk into it I'm going to put the pool in it milk's going to spoil and it's not going to be any good I'm not going to put that tote with the pool in my refrigerator it won't fit I'm not going to put gas in my milk jug and try to drink it because it won't I need, but I need the gas for my lawnmower I like my grass cut I need I'm, I don't need but I like a cool glass of milk on a hot day, and I need the pool stored so I don't have to buy another $25 pool every summer. 
cheap, but well, you know, kind of a waste of money if you keep buying them and buying them and buying them. So I need all three of those vessels, but they all serve a different purpose. But I need them all. They can't intertwine as much, you know, so it's like, that's the body, guys. So if you're to speak, speak. If you're to pray, pray. If you're to give, give. Quit, quit trying to put all these different vessels in places where they're never supposed to be. You know, that's what that's what happened with the church. We promoted all these people and put people up on pedestals. And everybody wants to be an apostle and a prophet and the pope so that nobody can tell them what to do, including God. It's not that important, guys. It is, but it isn't. We're all important. And then the world throughout this non-essential we're all essential to the kingdom of God. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. Somebody had to raise some of these power, some of these preachers. Somebody had to raise Jesus. Somebody had to raise prophets. Somebody has to raise teachers. Somebody has to, you know, nurture. You could, you could be the doorkeeper, drunk bum, stay-at-home mom. I don't know what the perfect will of God is in your life. Some of these single moms are tougher than a lot of us. Guys, it's, but we need to encourage the body to be the body. I need to keep my toad out there fresh and clean so for the pool. And I need to keep my refrigerator on so that my milk stays cold. And I need to keep my gas can in the shed so it doesn't smell at the garage. My wife hates smells and I've done that before. And what's that smell? What's that smell? Give her a headache. So, but there's a purpose for all of us guys. That's the beauty of the cross. That's the beauty of the 5 a.m. prayer. That's the beauty of direction. That's the beauty of my word will be a lamp on your feet and light on your path. That's what he's trying to do, guys. It's listen time. Listen to what the Spirit's saying to the church. And the reason why 5 a.m. is because mostly there's not much going on at 5 in the morning, guys. You've got some sleep. The day's fresh started before you. Not a lot of people are up. There's not a lot of cars, trucks, traffic noise. Not a lot of distractions. Your computer can be kept turned off. Your cell phone doesn't have to be turned on. You don't have to check your Facebook, your Instagram, your, your feeds. Your choice. Get your butt up with me at five in the morning, guys, and let's let's knock this out of the park in prayer, fasting, and dedication as unto God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost and His Word. Let's pull let's pull a Gideon, even a worldly, simple Larry the Cable guy. Let's just get her done, guys, <clears throat> on your knees. <laughs> With your neology, not your theology, not your opinion, not what you think, not how many books you read or think you read or that you know the Greek versus the Hebrew or whatever. Man, I think God's in a lot of that nonsense. Not really. Because what do you do with the Russian language, the Chinese language, or all these other podunk places in religion? In, it's a hard issue, guys. I don't know most of them. And I don't know even the common ones. I don't know German and all that other stuff. God does. Not about vain words and repetition. It even says that in the Bible. Weep between the porch and the altar, guys. Love you. Sorry for this long message. I keep trying to make them short, and it just, it just never happens. I love you guys. I hope some people watch this to the end. <clears throat> love you guys. And so does God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. See you soon. If you need to get a hold of me, Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Or Google us, Jesus is alive in America. And you can check out all the different things. <clears throat>